guys, I'm back to make another video. Hope you guys aren't just tired of seeing me in the same outfit. I am just on a roll making, making, making videos in this beautiful place we are at. It's called the Sanctuary, Sanctuary Spa and Resort in Paradise, I think this is Paradise Valley or we're in Scottsdale. I believe it's Paradise Valley, like the, uh, the border overlooking the beautiful Camelback Mountains. I will try to insert a picture right about here. Hopefully I did that. Um, because I, the, the lighting is such as to, that's not where the sun is coming into light. So everything when I try to make a video is, you know, it's not lit well. So hopefully I can get some good videos. I wanted that as a backdrop. I mean, it just, absolutely gorgeous so I want to do a video and I'm going to show these really quick because people were asking me about these on my snapchat I have some cards that I'm going to be sending out I like to send cards I have been in this not a rut but a dry spot as of <laughs> sounds bad I always think of channeling Kathy you know guts my glory when I say something that I you know, insert my foot, but <laughs> imagine your joke, Kathy. Um, I have not, it's not an excuse, but I haven't had stamps and the post office is just a mess to go into. And I don't know why I never think of it when I'm at the grocery store, they have it. Uh, Whole Foods didn't have them. I asked, but you know, Walgreens, I don't know why, but, and then I go and I buy one book. Hello, I think I'm thinking like, I want cute stamps too, and these are like the basic kind of forever stamps. So I looked online at the post office dot, you know, US gov, whatever that was, and they have some really cute options, so I'm gonna be doing that. But so I am, I, I have put it in my planner now, I have scheduled out time to give to my snail mail, the writing that I wanna do, I have a beautiful woman who has sent me two beautiful cards and letters and she is out the top to respond back to as well as other ones. I do list my address below if you want to exchange cards like glam mail, snail mail. Um, I will tell you it may take a couple weeks for me to get back to you just because I'm kind of backed up a little bit but I do now schedule it in if it's in my planner now i do it and i am now taking the the erin condren planner and i have changed it into a daily planner i have that much stuff scheduled in when i was in college when i was growing up even working with my career everything to me was scheduled and i work best under a schedule like that. I get the most accomplished. I I just like it. I feel good. I've always felt good being micromanaged like that to myself. Time management, you know? So, like I said, I've been talking. I've been doing like, this is, this is my fourth video, I think. But Plus, I was talking to the people outside. Mmm. My nails. Ignore those. This side's okay. Anyways, so I have fallen in love, for, well, for the past four years, with these Papyrus brand cards. And I'm going to show you a few of them because, and if you've sent me something, you're going to be getting one of these back in the mail because I just love them. And yes, they're more expensive, but it's, I feel like I'm giving, like I'm giving a gift. And there are a couple of people who I know, one actually mentioned it to me because I'm close with her, who said, Oh yeah, I know you're gonna send those out. Just send something in a little sticky note so I can use the card and give it to somebody else. So I'll do that for them. But uh, the first one I got, I have framed because it was beautiful. It is beautiful. And it's a little five by seven frame, gorgeous. So I will show you the ones that I got now. I found Whole Foods has these and it was like, oh, ones I didn't see at Target. I usually buy them at Target. You can go online too and they have a great sale section there where they have maybe Valentine's Day ones or ones that didn't sell as well. So you can get them cheaper, but they are pretty, pretty pricey. But it's like, like I said, a little gift. Keep these, you can frame them. They just make you happy. But anyway, this is, I like the blank ones. 
primarily two because I do have a, a quite a few, not quite a few, but a, a few of the other ones are ready, like happy birthday or happy anniversary, always to have. The blank ones I like the best because I like to send out things just randomly for no special reason. But here's the first one, and I love the pink along with the orange. As you know, that is my jam. I love that color combination. So that is that. Here's a pretty bird one. I love it how they're just bejeweled and blinged out. Now I did get three of these because it's just, I got three of these, so here are the other two. But watermelon, it's all glittery. I just love that, I mean, my gosh, glittery. And the little seeds, it's all raised, if you can see. That you put a little bit extra on there. I usually put two stamps on there. I'm not really even sure if I can get away with doing less. I should find out exactly what they cost, you know, because they are a heavier card. And then this one I thought was very pretty, kind of very Arabic y, very, very uh, Moroccan in the feel. And then I got two of these because I have so many people who love owls. And I just think that that is just gorgeous. Um, Kathy, no guts, no glory. Too bad that that's not teal. I'm, you know, anyways. This one, pretty one. And, of course, the ones that are not as embellished as some are a little bit less in price than the other ones. And then this, oh my gosh. I am so tempted to keep this for myself. But, uh like I do everything, I only get things, unless they specifically ask, that I would want for myself. I've always been that way. Even when I was younger, my mom taught me, you go for birthday parties, you buy the gift that you want. You know, you buy what you want because then you'll know it's good. Not that what they want what you want, but it's a good starting point. Unless you're totally different, totally opposite, you know, that they collect something or they've asked something, they have a wish list, anything like that. But if you like it, you know that it's, it's good enough to give to them. So look at the butterfly on that color. First of all, look at the card, the, the neon pink. And then neon pink with neon orange is my favorite color. Look at that. I mean, just, the, it's, it's all raised, bejeweled, and get a plank on the inside. I love that. Oh, boy. I just, I, I love that color. It's just bright and happy. And then I got two of these. I love the shoe cards. You know, that's on a really pretty, kind of an aqua color card, and just the jeweled. I would love to have those shoes. Looks like a uh, Giuseppe Zanotti shoe, doesn't it? Gorgeous. So those are some of my cards that will be going out to people because I have enough stamps for these. So that was it. And I want to take on kind of a little bit more serious of an issue, but this is a question that I get a lot, very frequently, both in wondering if I have kids, both in, you know, some trolls mocking me or even just some people who make videos that one person I was speaking about that made all those bashing videos about people and her channel has since been taken down or she removed it or whatever happened to it. I mean, she would, she constantly would say things, you know, just, just disparaging about me not being able to have children and, you know, my dried up old uterus and you can't even have kids like that suddenly made me not, you know, worthy of being a human being. Not that I should even defend it because it's just, to me, people say things like that when they have nothing else to say. So they go for whatever little nugget they think that they can get in there and get underneath your skin. And that part never bothered me because uh, I chose not to have kids. And I know that that is something that goes against the norm. And it's not as if I don't love kids. I love kids. I will admit, Old people are more my jam. I love old people because I really truly believe that they have lived their lives and they have so much wisdom and we should treat them with the utmost respect. And I believe that we do here in America, but not quite as much at all as other countries do. It's sad at the residence, residences where I'm at, how many people, um, doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, anything, that they're left. And even when they visit, it's not the same. 
you know, but it breaks my heart. It really, really does because they are just as needy. And I always think if it was kids sitting there and even though the kids are getting taken care of, they would have so much more attention. These people have lived their lives. They've taken care of you. They have, you know, they've fed you, wiped you, anything. And the greatest gift in my life that I was able to do was take care of my father um, through the circle of life through, I was holding his hand at the very end, and that was the greatest gift, the, the greatest gift. So, my story about being able to have children started when I had really heavy periods. And I went to the doctor, I was married at the time to my first husband, and I was diagnosed with having fibroid cysts. And they treated it at the time with giving me shots. And the shots, no, I did not, that, I'm sorry, I'll backtrack. I was put on a, which I was already taking before this, but they put me on it as you have to keep on doing it, a birth control. And I don't know if it was an, uh, something different with that, but I, just a birth control, which would control, supposedly control um, the, my flow, the monthly cycle, well, it didn't work. I would still bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed. So much so that as it went on, I had to get multiple blood transfusions because I would bleed down. I believe the normal hemoglobin level that you're supposed to have as a woman is between like maybe 10 and 13. And I would, I bled down once to like 4.7, which is losing over half of your blood. And, you know, I was very heavy at the time, which was a thing that kept them from wanting to do surgery on me was because of my weight. But so I was then asked, you know, I, I went on this shot, this, uh, oh, I had the name in my head. And it was a very expensive shot at the time that my insurance didn't cover it. So and her shot was like 600 bucks a month. What was that called? I got it once a month and we administered it ourselves. I can't remember the name of it, but it puts you into temporary menopause. So ideally you would not be having your period during the time, like at all, but I would have lots of, and once I broke through, I just wouldn't stop to where I would have, I don't want to be gross, but like really big clots and the pain, the pain that associated with that was just, you know, it just was tremendous. I lived, I burnt out so many heating pads by just having it shoved right there. My ex really knew how to, you know, kind of lay behind me on the bed and just massage with the heating pad, you know, until I would finally basically pass out from the pain. There was nothing that would take that pain away. It was so bad. And then I knew after that, um, the, the clots that would come, the bleeding, the weakness, I couldn't do anything. Everything was covered in, you know, a towel or a sheet. And it was not something that normal, you know, tampons could really stop. But I'm sorry if I'm being TMI, but this is how it truly was. It was something where it was thick overnight pads and many of them. And basically you could really sit on the, on the, in, in the bathroom and just like leak, like a sieve, just leak through. No wonder I was losing so much blood. Very, very, very anemic. So I was given the option of going in there and removing the cyst because they hadn't tried that before only because of my size and they had always hoped I would have a weight loss surgery back then. And back then with weight loss surgery, I was, I was so sure, I was so sure that I was gonna die on the operating table. I was so sure that nobody at my size has ever had any procedure done. Because remember, I was going in to have things done, like an MRI or anything, and I was off the charts. I couldn't fit into a regular MRI. I went into a, have an MRI that large football players would go into, and I was able to do it that way, but everything was like a chore. So I was so, I, you know, I, I might cause my mom and my family such grief. I'm sure she sat there, and she did, because they had plenty of interventions to try to get me to, 
not to lose weight, but to have the weight loss surgery. And I was just so sure that I was going to die. I just didn't want to have it. I just didn't want to have it. And I wish I would have gone and had it a lot sooner because all of this stuff, once you get to be a certain weight, it, it piles on so much more. And on top of that, I was at, you know, weights that really affected my back and then had the really, really, really large breasts and just everything will compound on top of each other. So, and then the blood will leave you basically, you know, the blood loss on that large of a person, you're not, you know, walking around and doing all that stuff anyways. But my family was always very supportive. Um, very supportive. I want to do a video on that too. Just about, I hear the stories about people whose family would taunt them or not be their soft place to land. And I never realized, not how good I had it, because I still have it that way, but just exactly the difference that people who don't have that, what it's like. I've seen, I've heard stories about people who had to, to literally drive themselves to the, um, hospital to have the surgery because their family was so against it and just the my I've always had I had a family of brothers who would call ahead to restaurants to make sure that the charm the charms the arms of the chair that they didn't have arms so I could actually sit there and everything was made to whether you could get me up at a certain place and drop me off the closest and just everything that was done but like I said I've been talking too much so I was given the chance to go in there and have them removed or have a hysterectomy. And you know, I didn't take it lightly. I had to make the decision pretty quickly because the doctor, I had a doctor at the University of Minnesota who finally decided we got to go in there because this is life or death now because you can't keep on doing that. You will just die. You can't, this, you, you, this has to stop you'll bleed to death and, you know, stroke or what have you. So, you know, I talked it with my husband, about it with my husband at the time. And we, you know, it is something permanent. I had came to the conclusion that if it wasn't this drawing force in me, and it really never was. I played with dolls when I was little, but I know my friends who are amazing mothers who they really got pulled into being the mommy, the mommy, the mommy. And that wasn't me. I had so many things I wanted to do. I, you know, I guess to put it frankly, I was selfish perhaps, but I don't regret my decision at all. Part of it was always that we could always adopt. I could always adopt if I wanted to. And they were leaving the, the eggs intact. So we could do a surrogate or could have at the time done a surrogate or even afterwards to do that. But since then, the calling just never came. It never came. The only part is like after my mom died and you realize this, the, you realize there is an order in things to life where it goes smoothly, smoothly. So you're taken care of, then you in turn take care of your kids and it's something of a kind of a smooth circle how things work. So with me, it's not, it's not like that. So it's different, but I am not without that feeling that I am nurturing and caring for others. I, nieces and nephews that I have helped be a part of since they were very young, no, it's not the same thing but I'm not lacking and I don't regret it. And it wasn't for me, you know? And I'm not out there being a, an advocate saying, you know, we're all the same and don't call me this and we should be, I'm not like that. I'm just giving you my story. And I've never been treated differently. I'm blessed in those areas because I've heard the stories about, again, family or people who treat you like you're not quite, you know, as good as they are or what have you. And thankfully, I just haven't been. I mean, whether they're saying it behind my back, behind closed doors, I never got that vibe from it. And occasionally, I will have that pull, but it doesn't last. It just doesn't last. And so that's my reason why I made the decision and even in the very beginning when I was younger I knew I went on the pill 
right away. I knew it just that's what you do. You don't you grow up and you nobody I knew was pregnant as you know a teen or out of wedlock or anything like that. Not that I'm I'm not I'm not judging. I'm seriously not judging, but it was just not part of what was acceptable growing up. In fact, that would have been a nightmare of embarrassment and I'm just keeping it real. It, it, it truly would have been. So it's, it's something that I knew that you just protect yourself from. So if you're gonna be sexually active, then you protect yourself. So I've always been that way. I've never tried to have kids. There was never a point when I tried and I couldn't. My heart does go out to People that I've known in real life who tried and tried and they are just called to it. The calling to be a mommy or a daddy for them is so strong and it's it's heartbreaking. And then some of the ones online, oh, YouTube, some videos of people that I am subscribed to who are trying so hard and it's very expensive that insurance doesn't cover for the most part. and what they go through and the hopes and you know just like with the well, I did another video on Amber Walter and just like with the let's see it's Shannon Rose Bree and Kristen I believe her name Kristen Kirsten Kristen K I believe how they were all trying and then Bree was the one that got pregnant first and I know that the other two are desperately trying and I, I can I can imagine I can empathize with when one of the friends kind of gets pregnant and the other two haven't yet and it's not a jealousy per se but more of an envy and I know that with some people it could it could ruin friendships because it turns into from an envy to a jealousy or the, or you know, in some in some cases, that the the person pregnant does start feel differently about themselves. And anyways, so that was it. And again, it's not because I am against kids. I love kids. I've just never been a person. You know, like I said, um, I'm I really have always been drawn to older people, the elderly community. I really have kids. I'm not saying kids are enough people, but kind of like kids have. A lot especially here in America and there are a lot of people looking out for them and I, I it's heartbreaking when you see kids be abused especially because I know the kind of wonderful childhood I had and how you the parents are responsible for writing on the slate of life of who that child becomes and it's such a a daunting task and something that is so important and really when I see these parents who parents who are and I I do get judgmental on parents who in my mind don't do the right thing and again that's my mind I have learned to not vocalize it anymore I didn't do it all the time before but because I had a strong belief and a strong family when I see people being selfish because you decide to have kids they I truly believe and, and strongly believe that they never asked to be born you decided to have kids so it is your responsibility so if I would have had kids I know I would have done a slamming ass job because I would have known that that's my responsibility. They didn't ask. I would never be one of those mothers who was like, you know, you need to love me, love your mother. They just would out of respect, out of what you've given them. And that's, you know, how I believe. But so when I see people being really selfish and these kids suffering, that breaks my heart because they're so innocent and you are there with the most important job ever, but to be shaping this young life. And that really is heartbreaking. That truly, truly is. But that's my reason for never having kids. And God bless truly all of you mothers out there, especially the one that has, not especially, but especially the ones that have multiple kids, at like twins, triplets, or have them close together. My mom with her first marriage had four boys basically a year apart you know so my brothers are all between 
uh, 12 and 15 years older than I am, a whole different generation. So I was kind of an only child, but not really, but kind of. But um, I don't know how she did it. Four boys, oy, you know. But, you know, the people who do it and do it right, I know that they get so rewarded with the grandkids. My father-in-law used to always say that the kids are the investment and the grandkids are the payoff because, you know, and grandparents are port such an important part of the child's life too. You know, never try not to alienate them because they need to be able to have that place that you go where they have some rules, but it's really kind of more of a chillax version of your parents. And I had all that. Sadly, you know, I feel because my parents had me when they were older, they were in their later later 30s that and they died young but not young but I, my mom was 73 when she died that's not young but I wanted to be one of those people who were you know I see them all you know they'd be 60 and they have their mom or dad still so but anyways I loved them when I have them they're still here in my heart and I love them they're they're me they're who I am them I am the combination of the both of them and I see that inside of me but that's the reason why I didn't if you have them cherish them be kind to people who are trying and you know I know that they don't want to hear all of the suggestions and all of the oh you'll do it and you know they're tired of hearing that I've heard that's one thing I learned not to do be there to listen to but don't patronize and even if we don't mean to patronize I can see how it comes across like that and I strongly got that message from some people that that's something that irritates them the most so with that being said that is my reason why and let me know if you have any more topics you want me to talk about I want to try to do I am trying to and I'm going to succeed I have not bought as much as far as makeup goes especially I'm gonna be having a vlog so I know I've been saying that forever but I, I am I am gonna be having that and selling a lot of my makeup that is either it's high-end not used or barely used and I know you know a lot of people here do that and I in fact have bought some from some people in the past great ways to get high-end makeup for you know less money and and things like that so I'm gonna be doing that just because I have too much and it goes bad and I think I before YouTube I didn't I think I was I'm part of like a lot of people are where it's like YouTube made me buy it and I don't like it I know a lot of people like to collect and if that's their thing that's their thing but I'm I want to say minimalist because I'm not a minimalist, but too much stuff like makeup and things like that make me not appreciate what I have, and it's just too much. I don't want to choose every day and, and pick, and I'm not a makeup artist, and I know it looks good, and I want to have a few choices of the ones that I like, and that's it. So I have too much, and I don't, you know, people could really use a good deal on some high-end makeup. So I'll be letting you know about that. With that being said, thank you for listening to me ramble on. I will try to whittle this down, take some time off of it. And just remember to always live your most glamorous life. And I will talk to you soon.